In this video, we're going to look at how to use Substance Materials in Unity using the new Substance plugin. We will cover importing materials, changing parameters, and applying textures to Unity terrain. I use the techniques shown in this tutorial to build this demo scene. The scene uses materials and meshes from Substance 3D assets as well as textures from Substance Painter. The first thing we're going to need to do is add the plugin to our Unity project. The Substance for Unity plugin is available for free on the Unity Asset Store. And you can download the plugin into your project using the Package Manager. So here we'll go to Window, choose Package Manager, and under My Assets, you can see that I have this Substance 3D for Unity plugin. So once I have the plugin, I can download and then import that here into my project. Now, I've already done that here in this case, and you can see that we have the Substance 3D for Unity plugin folder ready to go. Next, I'm going to need to import some Substance materials. To start, you can get free materials from the Substance Community Share site. These materials are created by Substance artists in the community and are free to use in your projects. If you subscribe to the Substance 3D collection, you can download content from the Substance 3D asset site, which also contains meshes. Now I'm going to search for some materials, and I have an idea of some of the materials I'd like to work with. So this one here, this sand mine rock rubble I'd like to use. So I can simply just download this directly into my Unity project now that I have the plugin installed. So here we are back in Unity. Now if I navigate to the folder where I downloaded the Substance material, so I created a Substance folder, and here is where the material's been downloaded. And you'll look inside the folder, you can see that the first thing, a Unity material has been created for me. Also, a series of Substance-generated textures have been created as well. So for example, here I can see the base color, here is my normal, here's my height, and so on. Now, there's also two other assets. Number one, we have the Substance Graph object. This is the Substance Graph that represents the material. And here in the Properties panel or the Inspector panel, you can see that I have all of these parameters that let me control the look of the Substance material, as well as change the output resolution. More on that just in a bit. Let's also take a look here at the actual Substance file object itself. Now here you can see that we also can see these parameters. However, here at the top, we have an option here for Substance Graphs. And for example, if I want to copy a graph or make an instance of a graph, I can do so by just clicking this Copy Graph button. And then if I want to delete that graph, I can hit the Delete button. What the Substance File object allows you to do, most importantly, is manage any graph instances that you create. Okay, let's jump back here to that material. Like I said, Substance plugin will generate a Unity material. If we take a look here at the top, you can see the shader is set to HDRP lit. The Substance plugin will take a look at the render pipeline you're using for your project, and it will create the appropriate material and shader. So for example, it knows if you're in URP or HDRP mode. Here, if we go to edit and I go to my project settings and take a look here at my graphics, you can see that I'm actually using an HD render pipeline asset. Again, the plugin knows this, and so it creates the appropriate shader on the material. Now, all I need to do is simply take this Unity material and just drag and drop it here into my scene, and that applies the substance material. Now we can go through the process of just making changes to our material. Now first, I'd like to switch the shader, and I can also do that. So if I come over here to HDRP, what I would actually like to use is this lit tessellation shader. And for the tessellation mode, I will set this to Fong. And for the displacement mode, I'm going to set this to tessellation displacement. Now, if we scroll down here at the input maps, you'll notice here that my height map is being used. Now, one other thing I want to point out about the HDRP process is that here we have the mask map. The Substance plugin will create this mask map for you automatically, and it will take the generated substance textures and pack them into this map, adhering to the convention that Unity uses. Again, all of this is completely automatic, which is nice. Now, let's come over here to the height section, and instead of using min max, I'm going to set this to amplitude, and I need to set an amplitude for my height map, which is actually in centimeters. Now, if I jump back over to my Substance 3D assets, this is the material. Let me just click on this material to get some more information here. And you'll notice over on the technical information, this material has some physical size associated with it. So it's roughly a 2 by 2 meter with 17 centimeters on the height. And this is the number that I want to use for my amplitude. So back here in Unity, I'm going to set this value to 17. Here I have the base parameter, 
which allows me to control the base of the height map between zero and one. Uh, this 0.5 is, is not really working as I want. So I'm just gonna just make a little bit of an adjustment here to this value. I think I'll set it around 0.3. Now, as you can see, we have this plane, we have a substance material, and we have some nice displaced textures. Now, we actually need to increase our tessellation factor here because things are looking, yeah, fairly low res or chunky. So I'll just take my tessellation factor and just drive this up. Okay, so now we have our displaced ground plane. This plane I actually imported as an FBX file that I created in my 3D program, and I know that it's roughly two meters by two meters. So in this particular case, I don't need to actually tile the material. But if I wanted to, I could simply just come over here to my base UV mapping and just enter the tiling information, just as you would with any Unity material. So now what I can do is come over and start to take a look at the substance textures themselves. So here, if I come over to my graph object, now I can start to work with the actual substance itself. So for example, we have our output resolution and I can change resolution on this. Maybe my project requires very high resolution textures, so I could set this to 4K. Or maybe I'm working on something for mobile, so I could set this actually to 512. With Substance, you're able to interactively change the resolution depending on your project needs. So here you can see that we're working with a 512 texture. We have an apparent loss of detail. But again, if I want to change this, and let's say I take this back up to 2048, the textures are now recomputed, and now we get all that nice, crisp detail back. Materials downloaded from the Substance 3D assets are going to have these technical parameters. So if we take a look here, these are gonna allow us to make some changes to things like the normal intensity. I could actually drive this up if I wanna increase my normal intensity, or maybe I wanna decrease the saturation, or maybe even increase contrast or something on my textures. These allow me to do some image editing directly here inside of the substance, rather than having to edit those materials outside in an image editing application. Here in the graph, you can also see the generated textures. And you can also check how these textures are interpreted for a linear workflow. So for example, base colors sRGB, where something that is data-driven like a normal map is set to sRGB. In this beta plugin, you can see that my thumbnail is actually rendering incorrect here, but you would see this at the normal map. You can also click on these buttons here to actually select the texture itself. So now we've selected the base color. If we take a look, here we can see the base color texture with all the texture properties, such as the filtering mode. Okay, jumping back here to the graph, we can go in and start to change some of the parameters here. So for example, I have this color. Maybe I want to darken this color slightly. So you can see I can start to do that. And then there is a parameter here for color weight. I can actually drive the blending of all these different color values as well as change their roughness values as well. So for example, I'll come in here and just make it just a few changes, maybe something like this. And again, adjust the color weight. These parameters are all specific to the substance material. So depending on the material itself, you could have a host of different parameters. This substance that I'm working with just gives me the parameters that you see here. Here, I am running through the process of duplicating the ground to create a terrain. The textures created by the substance plugin can be used with any materials you create. Simply drag and drop the generated textures into the texture channels for the shader. I'm adding an additional plane to apply a new substance material. On the 3D Assets site, I'm going to grab another material and download it to my Unity project folder. So now we're back in Unity, and you can see here that my material has been imported to the project. So I'm just going to grab the Unity material, left click, drag and drop that here to the plane. Now with the material selected, I can go in and start to make uh, some changes here. Now the physical size of this material is a one by one meter by three centimeters uh, in height. That's the physical size. So this plane is actually quite larger. So in this case, I'm just gonna adjust my tiling. So I'm gonna just adjust this by three. So we'll do a three by three tile. Now I need to jump in and start to maybe change some of the substance parameters. So what I'll do is come over here to the substance graph object. Now there's this mold that's on this material that I definitely don't want. So I'm gonna take this mold density and just set that to zero and the spread and set that to zero because I really just wanna have kind of this dirt and rock. And now I can see here that uh, I think maybe my dirt color is a, is a bit too dark. So I'm just gonna come over here to this color value and just lift this so that it more closely matches the, the scene that I have. So I'll do something maybe a little bit like that. And then if I need to, I can also go in and adjust the pebble color. So maybe I'll just slightly lift that as well. So now just with those few adjustments, this new dirt material is starting to look like it fits within the scene a lot better. 
Now there's another material parameter here that I can change called water level. So I'm gonna adjust this slider and by changing this value, this creates water puddles here in my scene. So if we zoom in, you can see that we have some nice little water puddles here, which is looking pretty nice. And so there we go. With just a few tweaks of the parameters here, I can get a varied material that's gonna work for the needs of my project. Now the resolution is pretty low, so let's go ahead and crank this up to 2048. And now we'll get just a little bit more clarity there in the texture maps. All right, so that's looking uh, pretty good. So earlier I mentioned duplicating a graph. So I have another section here of my ground that I created. And what I'm gonna do is just come over here to that uh, mold covered soil. So this is the substance file object. And you can see here that I have my substance graphs. So I wanna make a, a duplicate of this graph. So I just simply need to just copy the graph. And you can see here that the substance plugin is now generating a new material as well as a set of new textures. Here in my project, you can see that I have this copy folder. And if we expand this, I get a new substance graph object as well as a new material and a set of new generated textures. So now what I'll do is take this material and just drag and drop it here onto this new section. And like I said, this is a completely new material, so I can come in here and make any number of changes I want. So I do want to continue to tile that uh, as a three by three. And now I'm going to select the copy of the substance graph. And here I can go in and just start to make some changes to vary the textures that are generated. So for example, I may just come over here and click this random seed button. And you can see that each time I click the button, the substance is randomizing the settings here to generate a new look. Maybe in this section, I really don't want to have any water. So I'm just going to pull this value down. And then maybe play around with the overall dirt color. So perhaps just drop that down slightly. So we get something like this. So as I zoom out here in my scene, you can see that we now have two sections here. One that contains, you know, one version uh, with the water puddles and one version uh, that doesn't contain the water puddles. And as able to do that by just simply duplicating the graph and working with a new set of parameters and textures. And that saves time from having to like, you know, go out and try to rework the textures or, you know, re-import uh, the substance over again. So before we close things out, I would like to show you just another example. Earlier in the video, I had mentioned that you can use the substance textures in custom materials. Here's an example where I'm going to use the substance textures to help drive my Unity terrain. So I have just a, a really basic uh, terrain here. We'll come over to the uh, paint terrain and let's edit the layers and create a new layer. And I need to select the texture 2D. So here in this case, I'm just going to grab that sand mine uh, diffuse and we'll select here the layer. I need my normal and my mask map. So I'm just going to drag the normal map texture that the substance plugin generated and apply that. And then I'm going to grab the mask map and drag that in here. Now I can see I'm just getting a little bit of a bug. I'm, I'm using a beta version where it's not showing me the thumbnail correctly, but no big deal. Uh, let's come over here to the size and I'm going to set something like maybe 60 by 60. Uh, so here you can see that we're able to use these substance textures uh, to help drive my Unity terrain. So uh, let's just go in and take it just a, a little step further. Let's add another layer on top of it. This time we'll use another substance material. Uh, I think I'm going to go with that uh, mold covered uh, soil. So we'll use this guy here, select the layer. Let's do the same thing where we're going to grab the normal map. I can see I'm still getting a little bugged thumbnail there. No problem. And let's grab the mask and drag that in. And so now I can come in with uh, just a brush. And here we can just grab one of these uh, brushes. And I just go with the one I've got. And I can just start to paint here on the terrain. Uh, now what I need to do is uh, come over here to the size settings and let's just go ahead and set the size. We'll try 80 by 80 on this one so we can see it. And uh, sure enough, you can see that uh, we're now painting here between two different substance materials right on my Unity terrain. Uh, the beauty about this, again, what's really cool is that uh, we can obviously jump back to our substance parameters now. So for example, if I come over here to uh, my graph object, again, we have that water level. If I, let's say I don't want that, I can just uh, decrease that. And you can see here that that value changes. Again, I can go in and just start to tweak these substance parameters uh, just like this. And ha let's go back and say that, yeah, you know what? We do want the water level. No problem. It's just a change of a slider here. So now we have that water back on the terrain. And like I said, we were able to paint between these two different substance materials. 
Again, it comes down to just taking the generated maps and then using them uh, either with the Unity material that the plugin generated or using them in your own custom material. And that's gonna close out this video. Using substance materials in your Unity project is a straightforward process. The Substance plugin helps you to texture assets and quickly make variations. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.